morning guys. Um, my intention had been to head up to uh, maybe the Maydock area today with uh, Jeff and uh, look for fluorite, but uh, I've, ha I've had a change of heart. Jeff's not coming today. He had some last minute uh, thing crop up. So uh, instead I'm heading up the 400 here, just passed through Barry a little way back, heading up towards Parry Sound. Um, I'm really interested lately in uh, uh, rare earth minerals. Uh, and also stuff like tantalum, uh, what they call the, the conflict minerals. And uh, it appears there are a lot of pegmatites up around Parry Sound in which, uh, in which you can find these rare earths. The 17 rare earths, they're actually not, they're not rare. Uh, they just disperse very uh, evenly through the soil and so forth. They're worth a heck of a lot of money. Um, uh, things like, uh, you know, the neodymiums, uh, the rare earth magnets that can come out of those, they use them a lot in a green technologies. Uh, a lot of it's used also, I believe lanthium's used in night vision goggles, so uh, defense and so on also uses the rare earth minerals quite a bit. Uh, you find it in uh, appetites, uh, Bear Lake being a good example, uh, the number two rare earth mine up around Bancroft, another place you find these things. The neodymiums, which are basically a combination of praseodymium and neodymiums, together uh, collectively called didymiums, as in two types of dimium. And then the conflict minerals, uh, they're regulated by the, uh, the Dodd-Frank Act, put in place by the US, I believe it was, uh, whereby publicly traded companies have to uh, state any of the uh, conflict minerals that are being used, and, and it's called 3TG. The three T conflict minerals are tin, tungsten, and tantalum, and the G stands for gold. So if you're using those minerals from the conflict areas, you have to make public disclosure of that. Well, in Ontario, it appears that there is uh, there are deposits of that. I just don't know how well known it is. So just t turned off on exit uh, 207 off the 400. Um, turn right on the 141. It's just a, you know, a couple of hundred meters from, from the exit. Now I'm heading down uh, Lake Joseph Road, which is going to take me to Lawson Road, which is where we find our first uh, mineral occurrence. We've got to chuck in Dixon Road here. Yeah, we've got to follow Dixon Road off uh, Joseph Lake Road to get to, the, um, to Lawson Road. Check that out. We're going to have to find another route here. Road closed. Can't even slip by. There's a big gully in the middle of the road. So I'm going to head back onto Joseph Lake Road and find a roundabout way to get here. Portage Lake Road. We'll give that one a try. Here we are, guys. Cross the train line. <clears throat> it's a 400 up front of us, but obviously you can't access this spot from the 400. Real careful at the train line. Trains just come steaming down there. Here it is, I think. Yep, this is it. Pull over here. So this is it, guys. The OJP mine. Enough rare earths to put the Chinese out of business. Well, not really, but uh, I'm going to have a look, see what we can find. Um, as I said, it's not so rare, the rare earths. It's just that they're not properly dispersed. They're, they're just evenly distributed all through the, the soil. And where they're concentrated is where you can actually mine them profitably. Well, here they should be concentrated in a, in a vein, in a pegmatite. Back in 1910, you had uh, about 1,350 tons of quartz were taken out of this location, and uh, also about 90, 90 tons of feldspar. So what's left is, is the rare earths, and that's what we're looking for. Quartz is pretty uh, uh, unremarkable. Um, it's everywhere, but the rare earths, yeah, it's everywhere too, but I'd like to find a couple of crystals. So there seems to be actually two distinctive furrows. One is right here, where the deeper part is, and I believe where the alanite crystals came from. And then there's the uh, this more exposed area by the highway. So they were finding alanite crystals to a width of uh, seven centimeters and um, to a length of 90 centimeters. And they're kind of, um, a lot of times they're almost spindle-like, um, covered with a uh, limnite, also known as uh, lemon stone, which is basically a, kind of an iron oxide that's oxidized. So that'd be a good thing to find. The alanite is the ore of many of the rare earths, cerium, lanthium, neodymium. Other minerals found in this area, um, we've got monazite, 
which is a, a phosphate, uh, a rare earth phosphate. Uh, that's the color of it generally, but it uh, looks like a very small spine. It's but it's usually in the isometric crystal system. So not sure what that is. I'm going to just keep digging in this sort of hole here. It looks like someone else has been digging. Um, let's see what I can find in amongst this crumbly black rock. Here's something to watch for right at the mine. Guys, off to Healy Road and the conflict minerals, uh, tantalum in particular. Um, I'm not saying this is a bad place to come, the, this little mine here, but um, the point of the matter is I'm, I'm kind of looking for specific things. I'm not just looking for mica and quartz and feldspar. Um, I'm looking for, for rare earths and, and conflict minerals on this particular trip. So I just kind of resigned myself to eating lunch. Maggie made it for me last night. You got uh, quinoa with flax seeds, breaded chicken, broccoli, real good stuff. Uh, it's 12 o'clock, so naturally I'm kind of hungry. Got ranch dressing on there too. I put ranch dressing on everything. Straight stuff. Looks like we got ourselves a boat here. The ice is out, the boats are in. Are in. It's time to let the fun begin. Kind of a beautiful scenic place here at Gordon's Bay. It's on uh, Lake Joseph. It's kind of lucky I, I meant to take this picture off the highway and I stopped kind of right on the side in a very bad place and the cops just went past a second ago and I'd managed to move my car just in time. There he is. See him? That's a cop right there. Almost felt like he followed me but he didn't. Look at all the fun stuff you can do at Gordon's Bay. There we go. Somewhere off in the distance there's that cop lurking around. Probably suspecting I'm up to no good. I just got a ticket the other day. This guy's just got away with words, I think, you know. He's uh, under challenge in his occupation. Should have been a playwright or something. Um, I believe this is probably the right road. We'll follow along, see if we can find the, uh, the nickel rim mine with the conflict minerals. I think this might have been the road. I mean, this was something that was mined way back uh, some time ago. So this is definitely the ridge that I could see on the map, on the topographical map. Uh, there's the road I'm coming off. So I know the mine is probably about 500 meters along the top of this ridge here. So I would like to find the road in, like I, obviously there was an old road, this could be it, but I'm not following that filthy mess. Um, maybe it's on the top. We'll... So actually what I'm looking for is, uh, is coltan, which is the ore of um, columbite, which is niobium, and uh, tantalite, coal tan, columbium tantalite. Uh, that's what they're finding in the Congo, that's what's causing all the problems. They buy it up in Rwanda, send it out to China, use it for capacitors on little tiny cell phones and apparently uh, 2000, um, year 2000, PlayStation 2 came out, massive demand for uh, tantalite uh, for the capacitors within it and the cost just went right through the roof. Anyway, you find it in Ontario, it'd be a real good thing. It's in small quantities here I'm told. Can I find it today? Maybe, maybe not. If not, I'm coming back because uh, it looks like a real beautiful area. The road is now a river. kind of thinking that goes in the direction I want to follow and it's probably a road, it's just now a river, so a stream, so I'll follow that. Here's something else. You see this sort of gravelly pink stuff that's sharp edged for the most part? That is always what's coming from uh, where they've been digging. Every mine I go to, you see this gravelly stuff always on the road leading to it or from it. That's large. That is huge, whatever it is. Cloven hoofed. Not sure. Anybody know what that is? I don't. It looks almost too big to be a deer. Maybe a moose? This is actually one of the first warm sunny days of the year. It's going up to 18 today. Well, it is up around 18 right now. It's a Sunday. Probably some of you who watched the video will know exactly what I'm talking about. 
if you are living in southern Ontario or even a bit in the north. Here's there are various places around where I can see like fractured rock down this area. At least seems to be a lot of fractured. Um, obviously fractured by someone smashing and digging at it. Not sure where the actual mine itself is. Must admit it's been a just it's a beautiful hike out here. Uh, but I'm thinking it's more likely a place that's just kind of disappeared into the bush a little bit. Uh, I'm quite sure there's a central location. I keep seeing stuff that makes me want to keep looking, little hollows and stuff, where the main digging was done. But I think what I'm going to do is get some GPS happening and do a return trip with Jeff. Um, maybe even spend a bit of time out here, like a night or something. It's, it's a beautiful spot. It really is. So guys, we're sitting out here in my little garden house that I've been building as of late. The um, reason we're out here is because I, I just want to show you these two rare earth magnets that I've got. Um, a colleague of uh, mine lent them to me here just so I could show you. They're just part of the rare earth thing. Now this one's stuck on where it is. But anyway, point of the matter is um, they're so very strong. Uh, I'd say they're 200 times stronger than your regular carbon steel battery. Um, I'm really worried that they'll damage stuff inside my house, hence the reason they're sitting out here. I've already made a couple of mistakes with them. So this is a, you can see it's got a nickel plating on it because these have a tendency to spall uh, without the nickel plating. Uh, it's a um, neodymium uh, iron boron mix and just show you here, here's my rock hound hammer, watch this. It's going to lift it probably. Uh, you can feel it point. Look at that. No problem lifting the hammer, okay? Try and pull these things apart. Man, I can't even get it off here now. Just a minute. Just pinched my fingers there. Uh, that kind of hurt and it still does hurt, but I'm filming it for your own personal enjoyment here. Um, there have been cases where children have actually swallowed these things and they've pinched in their digestive tract and uh, caused very serious injury and in some cases death as well. So. Um, yeah, these magnets are not to be messed with by people like myself. Maybe you can see the pinch mark there on my on my finger, right about there. I just got my finger pinched with these things as they were coming together. Now the problem is going to be to separate them. Okay, they're together now. Now we've got a problem. We can't get them apart and they're actually starting to crack. So... Oh, almost... Oh, oh, I got it. I got it. Uh, Pinch, pinch. It's not working. I almost got it apart. Move it aside a little bit. A little bit aside. Not working. Sorry. End of the demonstration. That's as good as I can do for you.